Hey, this is Tim Sykes, and I wanted to show you my top student's profit chart, Tim Grittani. Uh He's closing in on $3 million, but more impressive than that, you know, after starting with just a few thousand dollars to his name uh, back in 2013, is the fact that he's learned so much in the past really year, year and a half. Uh, it's not easy to adjust to being a millionaire. Uh, after having just a few thousand dollars, you know, your whole perspective of the world changes. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Um, and so while he has not been perfect um, or even extraordinary the past few months uh, since he's become this, you know, millionaire, uh, he's learned so much. And I'm so proud to share his latest trade video where he recaps uh, his latest big trade. I believe it's his biggest trade. Um, in the past year, let's see, yeah, uh, so nearly $70,000 shorting uh, MGT. I mean, he's still doing very well. You can see here he's making, you know, more than most doctors and lawyers make, um, even after adjusting and really getting used to, you know, trading with more money and, you know, this market. Um, so there's a lot of adjustments to make. It's, it's not like, oh, you, you learn how to make a few thousand dollars and turn it into, you know, hundreds of thousands and then millions and then it's just going to go on and on forever. You have to adjust at every stage of your career. Um, and many of you guys don't realize that. Tim Grittani and I were very fortunate to have turned a few thousand into a few million in a few years, but it's still a big mental adjustment. And I really am proud of this trade uh, that, that Tim did, not just because of his biggest profit, but because of how he's adjusted. Um, he did not play it perfectly, as you'll hear in a little bit. Um, he definitely could have done a little better at first, but it's not an exact science. And he took the meat of the move, and it's most importantly, on top of everything, his pattern. Uh, what you guys really need to learn is that we're not masters of the entire stock market. We don't know what the whole market is going to do. We don't know what every stock is going to do every day or every week or every month. We don't know what the next Microsoft the key to turning a few thousand into a few million is very contrary to what most people think. And it comes down to figuring out one, two, maybe three or four patterns that you like, whether they're long, whether they're short, whether you're you know, buying pumps early in the pump or shorting the pumps later in the pump or buying earnings winners and holding or you know, buying a, a new billionaire play or you know, there, there's a lot of different patterns out there. But we're all different people, and this is what makes trading so difficult. This is what makes teaching trading so difficult. What one pattern might work for somebody won't work for somebody else. So all I can do and all Tim Grittani can do and really any successful trader can do is show the patterns and explain the patterns that work best for them and dissect those patterns in every way, shape, and form. Uh, from the times that you make mistakes, even if it's your pattern, to the times where you nail it when it's your pattern, to understanding when it's not your pattern, um, and, and maybe sometimes even trying new patterns and, and expanding your, your comfort zone and, and your knowledge base. Um, trading is a constantly moving target, successful trading. Uh, you know, Even if you're successful one year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful the next year. But if you have the right mindset, which is what I try and teach, you know, where you're adaptable, where it's not like, oh, I just need to, you know, memorize this one pattern and I'm set for life. It's about understanding how do you come up with a pattern that you're comfortable with? How do you recognize something that you do well and then do it again and again and again? Uh, rinse and repeat, not always winning, sometimes making mistakes, but winning more than you lose. So... Tim Grittani, you know, props to him for being so transparent, uh, props to him for, you know, sharing all of his, his wins and losses. I mean, he's had some losses in the past year too. You know, he's, he's gotten away from some of his patterns and he's gotten a little undisciplined and it's not the end of the world. Um, but he's back on track and I really think that this, uh, you know, solid gain, even though it wasn't played perfectly, uh, and he'll, you know, he'll be the first to admit it. It really helps you guys understand his pattern. It really helps solidify his own thinking of this pattern. And it's a great example of, you know, shorting this blatant pump with the meat of the move. You know, I shorted it a few times too. I nailed it. 
Um, obviously, I'm trading with a much smaller account, uh, but we both took the meat of the move shorting this play, this latest supernova. So thanks again to Tim Gratani for being transparent and sharing so much about his strategy. Really learn from him. And if you want more analysis, which I think you should get, check out uh, his DVD. If you go to timgratani.com, uh, you can watch his trading tickers uh, DVD. And that features uh, over three dozen live trades and, and so much about his journey. And I think it's required watching for all of you. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. And I hope you enjoy Tim Gratani's latest video. Thanks. All right, guys. So we are going to talk about MGT and my trading of it. Just one of the crazier stocks I've seen in quite a while. And despite a lot of early frustration on this stock, I really managed to nail it. The day it finally did have its big collapse last Wednesday, I walked away with a little bit over a $60,000 profit on it, which far exceeded any losses I had taken up to that point. Those last couple of days are the two I really want to focus on in this video, uh, that Tuesday and that Wednesday, because that's where the majority of my trading took place. But just to talk a little bit about the setup really quick on the daily going into that, I mean, it started pretty much like any other NASDAQ runner. I mean, you know, news comes out on this beaten down crap company. Stock starts spiking because everybody's overreacting to that news. I mean, we ran from 50 cents to a buck 87 in just a few days. And then that day four, we had the gap down. It was flushing down into the low ones. I was short a decent amount at that point. And I was just thinking swing short. I was going to just take it for a couple of days. I was thinking that it would get back into that 80 cent, 70 cent area. I could cover it up for next games and that would be that. You know, it was just kind of your typical whatever play. But it turns out I really underestimated the catalyst. Um, I mean, people were a lot more excited about McAfee than I thought. McAfee put out a lot more uh, promotional tweets than I expected, which I found very entertaining. And I mean, it was a stock that was rotating its float. So they managed to save it. It ripped back. It closed up in the 170s on uh, that day. And at that point, I, I was all covered up. I didn't take any over the weekend short. Uh, because I was scared of it. I was scared of it gapping up, breaking out, and that's exactly what it did. It opened up around $2 that following Monday, and that's a multi-day breakout at that point. I mean, that's patterned straight out of my DVD where I say that, you know, you may not long it because you don't trust it or because you're scared of it, but you sure as hell don't want to be short because you have to respect the price action or respect the potential for it to squeeze. So I managed to keep myself out of its way for the most part on Monday. I actually was long a couple of times, I don't think I managed to sell any of my longs over 260. Patience is uh, super tough for me on these. But the nice thing is that I didn't really twist myself up short that Monday at all. And when it held together all of Monday, when it closed up near $3, and then Tuesday morning when it was gapping up, I mean, it was around then when I started to realize we had something really special coming together. I mean, a stock that a couple weeks earlier had been 30 or 40 cents was now up, you know, almost 1,000%. And when it comes to trading these charts, when you start to get that crazy overextension on the daily chart, I don't care how legitimate the news is, I don't care how legitimate of a company it is, you are going to get a pullback. And that is what I started looking for and that is what I started playing towards. And the more and more it extended, the more and more I was willing to use size. Up until this point uh, in the month, I mean, my risk had been supposed to be $2,500 and I'd broken that a few times and I've gotten stubborn here and there on MGT, on other tickers, I'd taken losses that were a little bit bigger than 2,500. And that wasn't by design, you know, that was just me being an idiot. But when this started to go crazy parabolic, that was when I said to myself, this one is worth going big on. And it really was the first one I've been able to say that on in a while. And so I threw my max risk out the window. I still didn't want to get ridiculous about it. I don't think I ever had more than an eight or $10,000 risk on this when I was playing it from that point on. But I wasn't going to limit myself on something that I considered to be an A-plus setup. It was because of that daily overextension, it was because of that euphoria surrounding the stock and surrounding the McAfee news, that I had my short bias. I trade off of the big picture. And that Tuesday morning, as it was gapping up, as it was still spiking, I was choosing to attack the front side of the move. Now, of course, this Tuesday, as it is starting to really squeeze and as it is gapping up and getting more and more ridiculous, like you'll typically see when we get later and later in the patterns on ones like this, uh, it was restricted at a lot of brokers. I mean, up until this day, I'd been able to get it at Speed Trader, no problem. Uh, ETC, no problem. 
But Tuesday morning, I couldn't get it at either of those places. The only broker I had Tuesday and Wednesday that would get me shares was Centerpoint Securities. And more specifically, their vision clearing firm. Because there are about four different clearing options with Centerpoint. They are by far the best broker out there for short selling. And I'm really happy and really fortunate I had that vision account because otherwise I would have been on the sidelines for this play. So let's just start with that Tuesday morning and some of the trades I made on it. Now this Tuesday, I was actually in the Denver airport. I was on my way to North Carolina. I was going on a family trip for the rest of the week. But I had some time between flights and I knew I was gonna have Wi-Fi on the flight. So I wanted to try to attack it. Again, you know, this is a way overextended chart. And I was, you know, I was feeling aggressive. I wanted to go for it. Now, unfortunately, that aggressive mindset, that burned me right out of the gate on Tuesday morning. I really took a stupid approach to it. Um, I think I had a small starter short up in the 340, 345 area, pretty much right near market open when 350 rejected. And then as it started to pull back and it pulled back under that first minute low of 328, I just, for whatever reason, was thinking, oh, this is going to fade right back off under three. And I slammed in onto that weakness on that little low a day crack, even though it had only been open for a couple of minutes. I, I was one of those emotional shorts. I was selling into weakness. And I hate doing trades like that at market open on either side. I don't like buying into strength near the open. I don't like selling into weakness. I mean, I don't like doing that in general, but especially at market open. And I got what I deserved. I basically shorted dead bottom. And then a couple minutes later, it came right back up. It ripped through 350, and I had no choice but to take it off. So that was negative 2,900 to start the day right there. Um, so a really sloppy start. So then I sat back a little bit. It was choppy for a while. Um, it was grinding in the mid threes. I mean, over under 350 a couple of times. And then after ramping up to 380, it had kind of a hard pull back down into the high 350s. And it started consolidating. And during that consolidation period, I built into another short. And again, this is where I'm thinking that I really wanted to go for it. I wanted to be there when this stock turned, when it started to roll over. I wanted to have a good average. I wanted to have a good amount of size. And I wanted to be in a position where I could just stay patient on a short. Because again, I didn't know exactly when that pull was coming, but I knew that it was. Unfortunately, it turned out I was wrong again. And since I had sized myself in kind of aggressively, I wound up taking a little bit of a loss on this one. I, I think that the second trade was about a $7,500 loss, maybe even $8,000. But the important thing is as it broke past that low 380s high a day, I stopped myself out again. I took it all off. So at this point, I was down about $11,000 on the day, which was pretty darn frustrating. But it wasn't so much about the money. It was about the setup. And in my mind, the higher, the better. If I have to stop out, no big deal. Because the higher this went the better the next opportunity would be. And it turns out it squeezed almost all the way to $5. I think it topped out at $4.98. And on that squeeze on that way up, I did try one more short, 10,000 shares, uh, somewhere in the mid fours. I think it was after the 450 rejection. Um, yeah, 450 slammed back into the 420 area. So I shorted in the 440s and then wound up cutting all of that again once it broke past 450. Uh, that was only about a six or $700 loss. I really didn't lose too much on that one. But I basically was just letting it spike. I was cutting my losses if I was wrong. I was letting it go up. And when I thought it was running into trouble, I was going to try to get back in. So as it neared $5, as I watched 498 top, as I watched it consolidate up there during that 5 to 10 minute period, I decided to take another shot. I started slowly building my way in, just 5,000 shares at a time. At that point, in my mind, I was playing off of 5. 5 seemed like a big number. It seemed like a key rejection point. And it seemed like another solid risk reward setup for me. I started off with about 20,000 shares short from a 492 average. So if I was cutting it at $5, I'm risking less than 2,000 there. And then we got the hard crack. It slammed itself back down to 450. So that ensuing pop, I took that as an opportunity to add. I put on another 5,000 shares in the 470s. And then it really fell back hard, down into the 370s. So I had 25,000 shares. I was in from a 480 something average and I was up over a dollar a share on it. You know, I've given this trade a lot of thought on whether I should have locked in here or not. And the conclusion I've come to is that I probably should have taken some off. I should have given myself a little bit of padding at least. But at this point, my mindset was patience. My mindset was, hey, the top is in. This is gonna fade back off down into the threes, down into the twos, whatever. And I didn't necessarily expect it to all happen that day, 
But I did think that it was going to have a really hard time the rest of the day overcoming that slam back. And then maybe in the next two or three days, you know, this would just be a nice swing position that I could ride down and it would be pretty stress-free. After all, I had pretty much top ticked the short. We got the big rebound from 370 up into the 430s. I believe I had another 5,000 share ad in the 420s on that rebound. You know, I was shorting strength. I was shorting the bounce. And it faded back off and held the 370 area again. So definitely there in that double bottom, maybe I should have been considering take off five or 10,000 shares. But I didn't. I let it rebound again. It got its way up into the 440s. Later in the afternoon, uh, after fading off into the 380s and holding again, it perked all the way up to 450s and then 460 before finally slamming into the close. I was right that rebounds were going to have a really hard time holding, but during all this, I wasn't taking any shares off. Right before close, I finally did force myself to take some shares off. I only took myself down to 27,000 shares though. So I really didn't cover that much. And I covered it in about the 415 area, so not that great of an average compared to where I could have covered it, you know, three hours before without having to sit through all that consolidation and all that stress. But because that perk up had failed into the close, because it had slammed back and closed so weak, I was still feeling safe. I was still thinking gap down the next morning. I was thinking it would just flush out. Maybe I could add some shares back uh, if it did gap down and it looked nice and weak for me. And then I could just swing it short for a day or two. But after hours on that Tuesday, McAfee started tweeting again. Stock started gapping up, and Wednesday morning it was gapping up even bigger. It was incredibly demoralizing to wake up and see MGT back up near $5, pretty much at my risk, and knowing that I had just let a potential $25,000 to $30,000 profit slip through my fingers. I mean, up to that point in the year, that would have been my biggest win on the year by far if I had just locked it in. So I was kind of, you know, mentally very angry with myself, uh, very flustered because instead of taking that huge winner uh, the previous day, I was now going to have to cover up my shares and overall it was going to become a small loss. You know, I guess I was fortunate that I'd locked in a few the previous day, but the rest of the shares I got covered up and boxed up in the $5 area. So overall it was a red trade. And even though I wasn't happy with how it turned out, even though... I did not like that it gapped up huge on me. I'm so, so proud of the fact that I did take it off. Even though in hindsight now it turns out I didn't have to. But I still am just really, really pleased with myself for getting out of the trade in that situation. Because that would have been a situation where I could have so easily gotten stubborn. And even though big picture, you know, it would have worked out with MGT because it did collapse later that morning. There will be other stocks and other situations where that stock will parabolic to eight or nine instead. I took off and I protected myself. Yes, it was another loss in a string of frustrating short sell attempts on this. But again, it goes back to the mentality that the higher it goes, the better of an opportunity it's going to be eventually. And for those of you who have seen my DVD, this really ties in to chapter nine. That chapter where I talked about shorting the front side of the move. I talk about shorting lower highs. And I concluded the chapter... Uh, with showing you a few stubborn trades of mine where I didn't take off at my risk, where I took really big losses as a result. And I basically concluded by saying, you know what, like I can't trade these right now because I can't follow my own rules. And if you're going to trade on the front side of the move, if you're going to short sell on the front side of the move, trying to get that really prime short sell entry, you have to be willing to lose. I can't stress that enough. If you're not willing to take that loss, if it's going to just cripple you emotionally or if it's going to lead to you being stubborn, wait for the big crack. Wait for it later on the back side of the move. That's the time to attack. But when the stock is still on the front side, it is just so, so dangerous, as I've learned multiple times with multiple large losses. But in the case of MGT, I did protect myself. I, Like I said, I was pretty much all covered up and boxed up around $5.00. And the reason I boxed some was because, again, the only account I could short sell in was Vision. And I had swung 27,000 shares overnight in that Vision account, which ate up a lot of my buying power because I don't have my accounts funded too big right now. So if I had covered all 27,000 shares and not boxed any, I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere near that kind of a size on a reshort. I think I only had about $70,000 of buying power left. So I was looking at maybe being able to reshort 12 to 14,000 shares in the $5 area. And I knew that I wanted to have a similar sized short. So that's why I chose to box some up instead. So yeah, that did kind of complicate things. That did confuse things a little bit. Unfortunately, a bunch of my trades got merged together as a result. 
But let me break down the rest of my morning action, and I have kind of tried to calculate out and figure out how much money I made in each portion of the trade. So basically, after being boxed up, after being flat, and starting the day fresh again, you know, frustrated as hell, I actually very briefly switched to a long bias on this. Um, I'm pretty lucky I didn't get burned on that, actually. But I was thinking huge squeeze possible because it did gap up through the previous day's high. I was thinking anybody who short sold this um, after that big crack on Tuesday was gonna be underwater. So it definitely was a situation where a big squeeze was possible. And like I said, I've seen it in the past where, you know, even though it's day three of the breakout, it still can shoot up a little higher than you expect. So I was long some right near market open. I think I was long from about 520 or so. And I was just given a chance to have a big parabolic through six, through seven, you know, just see how high I could get. And instead, it slammed back really hard out of the gate from the 540 area down to 5 and then even under 5. I think it was in the 480s before shooting right back up to 560. And then it just chopped around in there for a while. And during that consolidation, I just decided, okay, this long is too scary and I got out. I was out for a very small gain on my long attempt. So back to flat. And as I was watching this consolidate, it had the double top up in the 560 area. And as it pulled back that second time, as it consolidated above five, as perks kept looking weak to me, I just took the exact same approach I had taken the previous days. I slowly built my way in, and I was using that 560 high a day as risk. So I started with 5,000 shares that I unboxed, then I was unboxed 10,000, 15, 20. Eventually, I wound up being short a net of 23,000 shares, and it was probably from the 520 to 525 area. Again, it's really hard for me to say exact average, because some of this was sells in one broker, some of it was shorts in another. But that 23,000 shares with that 560 risk, I mean, that was in the neighborhood of eight to $9,000 risk. Yes, it was a big position, but it was a stock that I thought should have squeezed and it didn't. It was a stock that was very overextended on the daily setup. So I was willing to take another shot there. Again, I was willing to lose. One question I got a lot was how did you know that was the top? Obviously, I didn't know anything for sure. How many times did I lose on this on the way up? How many times was I wrong? And it just goes back to that old saying, it's okay to be wrong, it is not okay to stay wrong. And because I could trust myself to cut those losses, I was able to be aggressive in this situation. So MGT went on that morning to have its $5 crack. It had a little bit of a rebound off of that, tried to perk through five once, failed. And then when it snapped again under that low a day, it was done. I was really taken aback by how hard of a panic it was. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that huge of a tank. My plan again had been patience. My plan had been two or three day swing. But when they pulled support on this overextended chart, they really pulled it. And it got decimated. My first cover was a few thousand shares in the 330 area. I covered a lot more down near three. I did have some covers near bottom in the 270s. But by the time that bottomed at 265 and bounced, I was down to just about 2,000 shares. I had locked almost all in. It basically panicked $3 a share off of its highs. So yes, the plan had been patience, but at a certain point, if you're gonna get that kind of a drop, you need to pay yourself. And I also remembered the day before where I didn't pay myself on a big drop, and I wound up having to sit through a day of consolidation as a result. So I chose to take it off. And my plan the whole time as I cover that up was wait for a bounce. Because when you drop $3 a share off of a high like that, there's probably going to be a bounce. I did not have the guts to buy the bounce or you know try to get long any. But I simply sat back and waited. I wanted there to be a nice big bounce off the lows. And I wanted to attack there. The closing price had been $4.15. So it bottomed at two sixty five, dollars And as the bounce got through three fifty dollars and up towards four, I... Figured that was as good a time as any to start reshorting around the red green point. And honestly, I probably should have gone bigger on this short than I did on the uh, short up in the fives because now this was very clearly backside of the move. And this was a part of the pattern that is very, very familiar to me the bounce short. So I got back up to a total of 20,000 shares short. So I guess I put 18,000 shares on. And those shares were probably about the 380 to 390 average, somewhere in there. I, I built in along the way again. I just put on a few thousand shares at a time. And then I just tried to be patient for it to fade back off near its lows. And again, I paid myself in the afternoon. I got out near that 265 low. I got out a little bit after it cracked the 265 low. 
So when it comes down to my best guess of how the profit broke down on this, and I did try to kind of calculate this out, uh, the 23,000 shares short from up in the 520s, uh, I think that was about a $49,000 profit. And then the 18,000 share bounce short up in the 380s or 390s, uh, that was about 21,300. But between those two shorts, it totaled about $70,000, more than making up for my morning losses on it, more than making up for my losses the day before. I mean, it was the definition of a good risk reward setup because my losses were so small compared to my eventual wins. So anyway, just to wrap up, uh, if there's one big takeaway lesson on MGT here, obviously it's cut losses. I think I've made that pretty clear. But if there's a second thing I want everyone to realize, it's that this MGT profit for me, it wasn't from deciphering news. It wasn't from understanding SEC filings. It wasn't from having a better understanding of the fundamentals than everybody else. All this was, was my typical chart patterns. Familiar price action. I was playing chart patterns that I've seen again and again and again and again and again. So you don't have to be the smartest guy in the world to make a successful trade on a stock like this. You don't even have to trade the same patterns as me. I mean, huge credit to people who were able to long this early and ride it up. I mean, that's not me. I'm, I'm really bad at patience on the long side. For those of you who bought and sold for, you know, 100, 200, 300% gains, that's crazy. Like, that's a great job. What I hope you aren't is I hope you aren't one of the people who's just holding and hoping and goes for the huge ride up and is going to ride it all the way back down. So for those of you who bought and took profits, congratulations. But the point I'm trying to make is figure out what chart patterns are familiar to you. Which ones are your favorites? Which ones you're best at? There is no single right or wrong way to trade. I know a lot of successful traders and they all have very different approaches that make them successful. But the one thing they all have in common is they trade what is familiar to them. They trade what they are good at. They don't try to nail every single thing that moves a little bit in one direction or the other. They stick to their niche. They stick to their one area. And whenever a setup comes along that's specific to their criteria, they're ready and they attack. So whether you're the trader who can buy something like MGT on the way up and ride it for nice percent gains, or maybe you're the trader like me who shorts it and rides it back down, there's nothing wrong with either approach. You need to figure out the trading style that fits your personality. You need to figure out the setups that make sense to you. And then that's the area that you need to focus on. Everybody is a little bit different. So thanks to everyone who took the time to watch this and good luck with your trading. My name is Tim Sykes and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm gonna talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade.